Hi, this is Dale. I'm the mower expert here at Power Equipment Direct. What we're going to talk about today is the most frequently asked questions that we get about mowers and starting and receiving and those types of things. When it comes to troubleshooting, the first place you should go into your owner's manual. Most owner's manuals are going to have a troubleshooting chart that's going to go through all the possible issues and give you remedies for those issues. So when you receive your Z-turn or your tractor, both should be shipped with oil in them already, but you may want to make sure you check it and make sure it's at the correct level. It should be at the full mark. Gasoline, you want to make sure you use fresh gas. Don't ever put old gas in a brand new piece of equipment. So when you check the oil on your mower, you're always going to want to pull the dipstick. You want to wipe it clean. You want to reinsert it and pull it back out and check your level. So this is your oil dipstick right here. Take it out. It shows you your oil level. There's your full mark. There's your add mark. You'll want to keep it as close as you can to the full mark, but usually anywhere in here, you should be fine. Wipe it off. Stick it back in, pull it back out, check the level. When you do add oil and you go recheck it to make sure it's full, you're going to want to let that oil settle for a couple of minutes. Oil can get stuck up in the dipstick tube and it'll give you a false reading when you put the dipstick in. So always give it a couple of minutes to settle. So what you want to do is you want to check your owner's manual. It will tell you the amount of oil to put in the motor. It also tell you the rating of the oil and also tell you the weight of the oil that they recommend. Uh, that is going to be based on the temperature that you're cutting. All that should be explained in your owner's manual. If you have a fuel valve like this one here, you're going to want to make sure it's open. This red valve right here is your fuel shutoff. When these are shipped from the factory, they're shipped closed. So you'll make sure you hit the very first time you use this, you're going to have to make sure that you open that valve, otherwise the mower will not start. When you're done using the mower for the year, you've drained all the fuel out of it, you'll want to take it and you'll want to turn it so it's perpendicular with the hose. That means it's off. When you're going to use the mower again in the spring, you'll want to turn it on so it's parallel with the hose. So this motor, being a twin cylinder, has two cylinders, one here and one here, with two spark plugs, one here and one here. And make sure that the spark plug wire didn't get disconnected. This is your spark plug boot. This transmits the spark from the coil to the spark plug. If you unplug the boot, there's your spark plug. You would need a socket wrench to take the spark plug out to change it or clean it. Once you put it back in, hand tighten it. Be very careful this is porcelain that you don't break that. So you don't want to put too much tension on it. You want to get it up really snug. Once that's snug, you want to push the cap back on and you want to push it and make sure that you hear it click. That means it's on completely. You have two battery connections here. This battery is going to have to be connected. It's not connected when it's shipped. So you need to put the negative on the negative post and the positive on the positive post. You also, the seat switch here is going to be disconnected. What the switch does is it's a present switch. So you have to be sitting on the seat. It has to sense your weight for the mower to start and run. Should you fall off the mower, it would cut the motor and the mower would stop. But this is disconnected when you get it. So you have to make sure that you plug this in and lock it into place. So there's a fuse here that protects the ignition circuit of the mower. If there should be any jump in voltage, you'll blow this fuse. If your mower doesn't start, this is another thing you can look at. Pop the fuse out and make sure that it's not, it's not blown, that that's piece of metal is still connected. There's a little piece of metal up inside there. If, that, if that's broken, then you know the fuse is blown. You can get these at any automotive store. This is a 20, this one happens to be a 20 amp. Just replace it, push it back in, and put the retaining strap back on. It does not really sit. There's no kind of clip for it. It just kind of hangs there. So you've done all that. You go to start it and it doesn't start. What would you do? This is your blade switch. Pulling up engages the blade. The mower will not start if the switch is up. So you want to make sure that's in the down position. Here's a question we get all the time. I got in my mower and the mower won't move. Or I got in my Z-turn and it only turns in one direction. It'll keep making a circle, one way either right or left. There's lockout, transmission lockouts in the back of the transmissions. On a Z-turn, it's behind both wheels. There's two of them, one for each wheel. And a tractor's is just one for the transmission. It's usually in the back in the middle. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you go around behind. There are two lockouts for the transmissions. You wanna make sure those are both engaged so the transmissions work. What you have here, these are your transmission lockouts. Once they're engaged like this, your transmission is in gear. When you move your lap bars, the mower is going to go. If you ever have to push this, pull this out and lock it in that position. There's one for this side. There's also one for the right tire. So this is the release for the right tire, pulling it like this. Now that disengages the transmission. Once these are both disengaged, you can push the mower. Once you get the mower where you want, you want to drive it again, you need to release these by lifting these up and letting them fall back into place. Those are disengagements, so you can push the tractor. But if you don't re-engage them, when you try to use it, you're not allowing those wheels to turn. It happens all the time. Don't feel bad. Just make sure those pins are in. All that information is in your owner's manual. To start your mower, you're going to want to step onto the mower and sit. Make sure the lap bars are both out of the park position, even slightly ajar. The key will not turn. So they have to be fully out in the park position. 
Once the mower started, you can move them in and then forward or backwards or however which way direction you want to go. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, we hope all these tips helped you. I hope you answered all your questions. And as always, if you have any questions, give us a call or reach out to us through any of our available channels.